What's up, everybody? It's Gaming Diva here, and welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Now, in this episode, we're going to be running through Craig's dates. Uh, depending how long they are, I might make them into, like, one long super episode, or I might break them up into two. Um, I probably won't break them down as much as I did for Brian's, um, and try and make them more compact, I guess. Um, also, we're not going to really, really be talking with Amanda too much, just because we do already know kind of what happens with her. So we're gonna mainly just focus on the dates with Craig. So, let's just jump right in. Alright, so here's Craig. Let's see, his profile says, Dad of three, business entrepreneur, and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's gotta do it. Ooh, I don't know. I'm not really a fitness person, but okay. On a Friday night, you're most likely to get one last good cardio session in. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars? I don't really think that'd get you very far, but okay. What are your turn-ons? A sub six minute mile. Wow, okay. Uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Beer pong world champion. What's your favorite movie genre? Buddy cop movies forever. Yes, those are so funny. Okay. What's your ideal date? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. Uh, what do you never leave home without? An extra tube of energy gel? Is that like something you eat? That sounds disgusting. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of- I spend a lot of time thinking about- My mile time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Oh, man. Yeah, he's definitely into fitness. That's not really my forte, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> Dad tip number 77. Don't smoke. Alright, I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate Craig's dad book and type out a message. Hey bro, or should I say, neighbor, let's catch up like old times. A couple moments passes before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang out soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple of messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Now, I'm gonna fast forward through all of Amanda's stuff, kind of like I was saying, and we're gonna hop into the date. Alright, so we just made it to the softball field. Looks like this is where our first date's gonna be. We also did find out that Amanda is scared of softball because she got hit in the face by a ball when she was younger. So, we'll see how this pans out. Amanda and I make the short drive to the local softball field. For a kid's softball game, it's pretty packed. We clamber up to the bleachers and take our seats in the top row. I don't see Ugh. Craig anywhere. So when do the kids start crying and running off the field? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see any kids crying, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of, out of children fighting for my amusement. Oh. Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out to the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has River strapped to his chest, as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot? Their mascot's a pancake? <laughs> Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see it's the Maple Bay Flapjacks against the Pinewood Ocelots. Go Flapjacks? Oh, man. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard, despite their name. But yelling is fun. <laughs> Give it a shot. It's cathartic. Uh, let's see. Keep your eye on the ball. What's more important is that you're having fun. Are you willing? What are you willing to sacrifice to win? We'll just say keep your eye on the ball. And also on the bat. <laughs> and the outfield. And the other players. Just keep your eye on all that stuff simultaneously. Nice. <laughs> we watch for a couple of innings. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's trained the team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Can I stand Craig is good with kids? Whoa. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up to bat. They hit a fly ball out into center field. The little tiny girl <laughs> tries to get under the ball, but she misses it with her glove and it hits her directly huh? in the forehead. See? It's completely justifiable fear. The girl plops down in the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off the field as she sobs. Man, it's strange to think about how this guy was once backflipping off a roof into a pool while shotgunning a beer. That is a lot of stuff to be doing at once. Okay. He's so responsible now. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. 
but Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see one outfielder eating fistfuls of grass. <laughs> the batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! I close my eyes and brace for impact. Doesn't even try to catch it. He's just immediately just like, up. Oh, I'm accepting my fate. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in hey. amazement. I caught the ball. You yeah. saved me. I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. <laughs> I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Great job, everyone! We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man! Thanks! We've been working hard all season, and it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? Oh yeah, he's got the twins. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. So, you guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? Hazel. Yeah, it's me. Doesn't even try to deny it. She's like, yep. <laughs> Good looking out. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff, and when people get mad, I tell them I'm Briar. Mm. What? We will talk about mm. this later. Diva, bro, just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumps into the conversation. Not so fast, we have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm taking the whole team oh. to get pizza. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense, the girls won. What sort of celebration would it be if we didn't have our fearless leader? She lays her hand on Craig's shoulder and gives him goo-goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Amanda and I share a look. Alright, alright. Is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out, but covers it with a smile. Hmm. Of course. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? Oh. What? What? It's a real place. Oh, okay, I was like, ah! Uh, calling her thirsty, huh? An endless stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of the minivan and into the local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with Craig. Reminds me of all the awful pizza we put into our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold whole pies in half and put taco fillings inside? Ugh, that sounds disgusting! Ah, pizzacos. Pe yeah, <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> I can never forget. How did we survive college? Our bodies were younger back then, more elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste we put inside our bodies. The good old days. The kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. Amanda and I jump into slices of mediocre pizza. Hey, give me a pizza that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Oh, he's one of those people. Yes. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Oh my god, Dad! A different mom walks up to us, talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day about how great you are. Oh, I'm happy to look after them. It definitely helps that I have kids of my own. It's been so hard since Daniel left. I'm glad to know that my children have a strong male role model in their lives. Amanda and I look at each other again. Craig seems to get it from all angles, huh? Craig smiles sheepishly. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> Craig holds his fist out for a fist bump from the mom and what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Let's see, create a diversion, tag team with Amanda, smoke screen Martha. <laughs> well, let's work with Amanda, I think, to kind of help him out here, so. I give Amanda another knowing look and she hits me back with a nod. She understands. Amanda puts her hand on her stomach and looks at me with puppy dog eyes. <sighs> Dad, I don't feel so good. I think I ate too much pizza. Oh no, sweetie. You're not gonna projectile vomit everywhere, are you? Yeah, I think I'm gonna projectile vomit everywhere right now. The words projectile vomit and right now usually seem to get everyone to clear out, but Martha's not budging. <laughs> Back it up, Martha. You're in the splash zone. I drank a lot of orange juice this morning, and it's feeling pretty acidic. You'll be fine. Amanda shoots me a worried look. This con is going sideways. 
<laughs> oh, I should have known that a mom of all people would know the fake puke hmm. scam. Ah, uh, well, I guess it went away. I'm feeling fine now and nothing's wrong. She turns her back to me to talk to Craig. So I'm taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover? Hmm. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Oh, of course. But I could always use help watching after everyone tonight, if you're not doing anything. Wow, this lady is really going for the gold. Huh, <laughs> actually it'll be nice to have a night to myself in River, but thanks for the invite. Hmm. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing pizza into the coin slot. Martha angrily turns her attention towards her daughter. Tiffany, not another arcade machine. I swear if we have to buy it. Martha storms off towards her kid. She seems oh. nice. Yeah, the team is a big one. Weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat oh. the tokens. <laughs> Tiffany is a stellar hitter. Whew, I think I finally have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Only on days like today, I hope. Dad? Oh. Hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our DDR record? We told Ariana's dad that we could destroy him on the dance mat. Please oh, help. Man. Girls, you know I don't have my jukes anymore. But dad... Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. <laughs> Sorry, dudes. Duty calls. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Craig runs off with his daughters and I'm left alone with mine. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. It definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be a third wheel here. There's worse places than an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Want to drop some coin on pinball? You know it. Amanda and I pull up to the machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me never dies. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. And immediately she gets multi-ball. Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Don't patronize me. Hey, just trying to pay a compla. Amanda shushes me. She's in her zen zone. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just to be able to watch. You're friends with Craig, right? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we went to college together. Please don't lean on my thing. Huh? That's so interesting. So, do you know if he's, like, available? I honestly don't know if I could say, Seriously, you're gonna make it tilt. Because it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it'd be great if he... Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, the buzzer sounds and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. Uh-oh. Ah. <gasps> you stone harpy. What? Aww. I said, I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything to hurt your feelings. Hey. Amanda. Bro. What's going on? Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here, we're gonna be stuck here the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with Craig. We head out of the pizza place. Finally. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. I hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. River burps. Well, almost all to myself. <laughs> Hold up. Craig walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves oh. and a softball. Up for some catch? This might be less catch and more you throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab, but there's only juice boxes in there. Man, fatherhood is strange. You're telling me? I can't believe that I'm looking back on Keg Stand Craig days and reminiscing about it. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal oh. keg stand. Horizon. Okay. <laughs> it was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I haven't properly hung out with Craig in so long. I don't even know where to begin. Alright, so ask about coaching softball, about the business, about the kids, or that's enough. So we're actually going to ask him all these things. I can't believe you're a father oh. of three. Neither can I. You know me. I'm, in I'm an indecisive person. You switched your major oh. four times. Yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, but raising kids? When Briar and Hazel were born, it all finally made sense. It was like all the time that I spent trying to figure things out led to them. I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. 
It could be the only thing that happened to me, and I would still be proud of the life I lived. Alright, so let's ask about the business? Okay. So it seems like he likes us talking about him, so whatever. So, do you run a business now? Yep, we sell fitness gear. Imports and exports, mostly. But we're coming up with our own line of athleisure wear? Athleisure? Wear. Soon. <laughs> I nod. I mostly wear my sweatpants for watching TV, not, you know, sweating. Sounds like he'd make a killing. If you ever need athletic gear, I've got your back. You could sponsor me. I'll wrap your athleisure wear brand while I mow my lawn. That is the glamorous lifestyle we're catering to. Yes. Alright, then we'll ask about softball too. So, is softball coach the life you wanted, or was that the life you were thrust that was thrust upon you? <laughs> I'll admit, I was hesitant at first. Briar and Hazel had so much energy that we just had to get them into sports. But no one was there to run the team. The more I did it, the more I saw how much it meant to all the girls. I'm worried there'd be a riot if I quit. I would also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats. They're quick and they work as a team. I've trained them too well. They take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. Exactly. It's nice out here. Quiet. Must be good to get away from all the softball moms for a bit, huh? Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was a lot. Are they always hmm. like that? Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. God, it's worse than that? <gasps> Yikes. <laughs> I'm just so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? Know. Me? Oh. You're interested in me? Peace and quiet. That's hot, hot silence. <laughs> My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping mm. in on a Saturday. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's oh. no time. And I feel so uncomfortable trying to introduce a stranger to my girls into my girls' lives. They've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. Buddy, mm. I hear you. So, the moms can hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. So you're doing great, the right person will come along eventually. Hit softballs, don't get hit on by moms. <laughs> um, I mean, the right person probably will come along eventually, right? That's- I'm gonna go for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You don't have to rush it, man. Things will fall into place for you. And someday, you're gonna find someone who cares about your kids just as much as they care about mm. you. Bro, that's so sweet. Well, I'm distracted. I missed the softball and it hits me right in the head. Wow, that hurts. <laughs> Amanda was right oh. all along. Sorry, dude. Craig runs mm. over to me. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig spends a moment oh. examining my head. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make Whoa. it better. <laughs> you would be so lucky. Let's see, that was planned. I mean, kissing is for the weak. Well, no, not that one. So it's gonna be one of these. I mean... I feel like I've earned it at this point, waiting all day to oh. hang out with you. Well... Ow! Oh, Craig, Craig leans in and kisses my mm. forehead. Walk it off, champ. Are the lights on the softball field really hot, or is it just me? <laughs> I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Hey, little buddy. You must be getting tired, huh? Hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry things got so... You get a little older and life kind of gets in the way, huh? We start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party we went to where it got broken up by a helicopter? How could I forget? You and me hopped over the concrete wall to get away? But on the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked? Oh, man. Yeah. Could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked straight past them, like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us about how big of a bust it was. We had to talk with them for 30 minutes. You told them you were interested Whoa. in joining the academy? And then they started giving me pointers for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, uh -huh. college. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars, Craig pulls me into a hug, or at least as much as we can manage with the baby between us. Never enough time, huh? Guess not. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang out soon, yeah? I'd like that. Alright, let's see how we did! Let's say marinara? Oh, dang. Dang, we did well. That was amazing. Just like back in college. I've missed you, dude. Just like back in college. Alright, so that's it for the first date. Let's head right on into the second date now. Alright, so we're moving straight on into Craig's second date. So let's see what this has in store for us. 
I really want some good quality time with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up to him now. I type out a message to him on Dadbook. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for round two? Craig responds almost immediately. Dude, of course. Emojis. What? Uh, I don't know why you didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Another message pops in my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity. Brunch. Brunch? What? I type back. Brunch? What's that? You run, and then you get brunch. Oh, right. Great. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in it, it admittedly has become a bit easier. Despite always en the sight and always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. <laughs> is that what runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I laid some of my tennis shoes and threw on a t-shirt from a writer's summit I went to 20 years ago. And I head out the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with rivers strapped to his chest. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Hey, bro. Morning, Craig. River gonna be running with us? Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Goo. <laughs> oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. That's Arnold, the capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Ugh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have had a tantrum even if we tried to wash it. It was gross. <laughs> so, you've been running lately. Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an athlete at this point. <laughs> well, I'll try to keep up. So, where are we headed? I was thinking we could do a couple of laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle that. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming feeling, an overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. <laughs> That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw up some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That's going easy? That sounds like something I can physically do. Nice. Great, let's get started. Oh. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A, a few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter, and River waves enthusiastically at everybody we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings, aside from the birds chirping and the and River gurgling away in the stroller. It's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm-up. That was the warm-up? Let's start hey. the show. But wait. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully oh. don't drop it. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle. I feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey. I look down and pick up Arnold River's toy and hand it back to her. You must oh. have dropped this. Thanks for looking hey. out, bro. You ready? Uh, yeah, my body is collapsing in on itself. I mean, we don't have to let him know that, though. We're totally fine. Hmm. Everything's just great. We finally finish our however many tenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily, too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Almost looks like a frowny face. <laughs> Wait, she's just sleeping? We've been, like, running and she's just sleeping. Okay. That's one. What? Whoa. I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off a treadmill. <laughs> that sounds like me! Okay. Yeah, man. You really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? <laughs> Blap! <laughs> There's my little cheerleader. Diva, you ready? Ugh. Ugh. For, ugh. Uh, let's just do a slight, uh, oh, you bet. Oh, we just go, uh, and we're like, yeah, we're totally fine. Everything's great. I'm not dying on the inside. That's totally great. Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Diva, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you make it to the top. And two... Craig, point, Craig points to the top nice. of the hill. That's not the top. Uh, uh, uh. Well, you know what? Just do the over-exaggerated one. Let's do this. Of course. I don't know. I 
finally reach the top of the hill after making my way past what I was originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over into my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking into my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <sighs> River, I'm having a moment. Please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taken a beating as well. Huh. <laughs> so he is human. Diva, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. I do as Craig says and it feels a little better. But I'm still in agony. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Hey. Thanks, dude. Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it? I thought I was just, you know, dying. <laughs> Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. What's wrong, Sweet Pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks hey. around us. Oh boy, man down. I think we've lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. Hey. I've abandoned my child's toy. We gotta find him, dude. This should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River having it last at the bottom of the hill. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuffed capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to a place where River might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned Detective oh. McDad. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro venture? We high-five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. So it looks like there's a couple of places to check out and some bros around here that we, we could interrogate. Sounds oh. good. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens your edges a bit. All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch Meet Hell in three minute segments with five minute commercials in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy their wiper fluid and stuff. <laughs> He's very passionate hey. about it. Case in point. Let's play moment by moment. Hmm. Smart. So, where to, bro detective? The playground, the field, or the woods? I guess we'll just start at the top, right? We'll just start with the playground. We make our way over to the small playground at the edge of the park. A, pu a couple of kids play in a nearby jungle gym while parents watch on nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. This is the same park where Brian hit us in the face with the frisbee. I remember. So look for clues, interrogate Joseph, try to calm River down, move through the park. I didn't even realize Joseph was here. Let's talk to him. Let's see what Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed nice. in his book. Joseph? Joseph nearly drops his book. Hey guys, I didn't think I'd see you two out here. Diva, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying. Oh, well then, Joseph. Oh, for boats. Boat ropes. Right. Say, you didn't have to see a stuffed capybara around here. What's a nice. capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Joseph thinks for a second. Hmm, I haven't seen one around here. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. They must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they do always come back. Alright, thanks for your help. That sounds a little suspect, Joseph. So let's, let's start off with our good cop, bad cop routine. We'll be the bad cop. Mischief, you say? I, uh, wait. Am I being interrogated right now? No, yes. Only if you did something wrong. Thank you for your time. No, but really you are. Just doing our due diligence, Joseph. I don't know. Arnold means a lot oh. to River here. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christy. I imagine they have their ears on the ground with all the latest playground drama. They might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. Well, we'll let you get back to your rope book. Boat ropes! Sure they are, uh-huh. We head back to the playground. Let's look for clues? Yeah, let's look for clues. We'll just kind of start... I don't know. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. There's no forensic evidence here. No stray capybara hairs, at least. 
After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. <laughs> we head back to the playground. I didn't know River was having a problem, but we'll try and calm her down. This is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple of swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. Oh, hey. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. Craig steps River into the baby seat and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize that I am stuck. <laughs> River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. We head back to the playground. So we already calmed River down, so let's go to another part of the park. Where to now, bro? The playground, the field, the woods. So we'll go... I don't, if those twins are in the woods, those twins are so creepy. I don't even want to... I don't want to find them. They're just the worst. <laughs> we wander out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket, and the grass could hold on any number of secrets. Matt and Carmen Sita look for clues and interrogate River. Okay, let's start with Matt and Carmen Sita. Let's talk with Matt and his daughter. Carmen Sita spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. Hey. We jog over. Hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Mm. Thank you very much, tiny bro. But I should be fine. Hey. I like how he calls everybody bro, whether they're bro or tiny bro or, yeah, so, bro detective. Anyways. Uh, you guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Good transition, Diva. Say, you haven't seen any stuffed capybaras around here anywhere, have you? Mm. What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Wait a second. How do you know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? I quickly check my body for any Polaroids that might have that I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who I don't trust. I saw a memento once. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Diva, don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check oh. it out. Thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmencita. Oh. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find that capybara before River has a breakdown. Oh. Good luck! Let me get some apples for the road, though. <laughs> Carmencita hooks me up with some road slices and we're on our way. We maneuver back to the field. Look for clues and target. Let's... I kind of want to see the squirrels. You think they'll... I wonder if they'll show any of them, though. Where did the suspect say the swirls would be again? She said the tree. Ah, there they are. Oh, we like that. Carmen Sita was telling the truth. There are some rad squirrels. River seems happy. This may have bought us some extra time. You maneuver back to the field. All right, let's look for clues. We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much besides a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out to me from across the field. Oh. Diva! I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, inspecting something. I approach, my heart in my throat. As I lean over Craig, I see it. This is... Arnold's leg. I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should be subjected to this senseless violence. Oh my god, who or what would do this? Oh man. I don't know, but I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around trying to wipe the image of the stuff strewn across the ground in my, from my mind. Oh. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag it and tag it. Let's keep moving. We maneuver back to the field. Alright, let's mm. interrogate the baby, because, you know, she definitely knows something. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I get to eye level with River, who still looks like she may be on the verge of tears. Good cop or bad cop? I mean, I would think you have to be a good cop to a- It's a baby. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Believe me, nobody wants to find your capybara, capybara more than me. But we need more clues. And I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours might be something that'll lead us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Meh. <laughs> I turn to Craig. We're getting nowhere with this witness. We maneuver back to the field. Alright. 
I've dead deuced where we should go next. So, I mean, we have to go back. We have to go to the woods now. Going back to these places would seem kind of pointless. Oh, I really don't want to see those twins. They're creepy. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Joseph's twins must be around here somewhere. Alright. Actually, let's start off with Ro Why is he in the woods by himself? Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's <laughs> bench. Hey, Rob. Don't call me that. Okay. Hi, Robert. Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy. What are you up to? I... Thinking. This is my thinking mm. bench. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. Filling quotas. Mm. Have you, by chance, seen a small stuffed capybara around? A capybara mm. is... It's a large rodent native to South America. I know. Mm -hmm. So, you have seen one. A stuffed one? Not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Be good cop or be bad cop. Now, I don't think Robert would really respond to either, but I want to see what happens if we're the bad cop. <laughs> Alright, Robert. We've been nice. Help us out or I'm going to go off, learn how to fight, then come back here and kick your ass. You learning to fight? Please. Well... Fine. If you don't tell us what we want to hear, I'm going to spoil the season finale of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. You're bluffing. My buddy here doesn't play by the rules. Diva will do it. Callum and Flint crash into a haunted- Stop. You're a monster. Hey. Robert sighs. I haven't seen any goddamn capybara, okay? Crap. I was really nailing the bad cop bit, too. I thought for sure we had hey. something. Now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were around here somewhere, but I have no idea where we're supposed to find them. Wait, those creepy kids? Why don't you tell me they had something to do with this? Huh? Maybe I should have left the good cop, bad cop routine to the pros hey. on TV. Hey, Robert, bro, do you know where we can find them? I do. A lot of people underestimate the senses of a man who broods. I saw them lurking around here a little while ago. Where do they go? Ran into the woods. I'd be careful, though. I don't trust them. Then again, I don't trust anyone. Not even you guys. Not even that baby. Rep. I'll take that back. You're an old soul, kiddo. Thanks for your help, Robert. The woods. So we already we looked for clues already, I think. Did we? Crap, let's click it. Okay. Craig and I search around the edges of the woods and find some broken twigs leading us to a set of tiny footprints. Looks like this is the place, partner bro. The woods. Alright, so we're going deeper into the woods. Great. I stare into the depths of the woods. By the way, ominous music, not helping. Who knows what could have been oh. in there. Are you prepared for what we might have to face in here? No or yes. Um, I'm not, but we'll be fine. I'm ready, partner bro. Hmm. You? Nope. But if it gets River to stop crying, I don't care. Hmm. Let's do this. We start down the path into the woods, keeping our eyes and ears peeled for any sign of Arnold. There are no squirrels or birds anywhere. The silence is unsettling. The sun can barely peek through the canopy. It's colder here. Suddenly, we hear voices. I want to do it. You got to do it last time. Craig and I come to a clearing where we find Christian and Christine kneeling over something. Stop right there. Put your tiny hands where we can see them. Christian and Christy just stare at us. God, they are so creepy. You heard the guy. Put your hands up. We're kind of in the middle of something here. Yeah, can you come back later? Mm. What are you kids doing? Cutting stuff up. Oh, that's cute. My heart is pounding. Is this... Is this the end of the line? I step closer. I can't believe what I'm seeing. A pair of safety scissors lies in the dirt, and... It's Arnold. Hey. What have they done to him? Arnold? Goob. <laughs> you heard the baby. Hand over the capybara. No fair. Finders keepers. No, not finders keepers. That's our property, and you've desecrated it. Well, how can you prove it's yours? Craig holds up Arnold's severed leg. I have to oh. look away. You two got sloppy. You left the evidence behind. I think you'll find this leg perfectly fits onto his body. Christian and Christy look at each other. They don't know what to do. How about a deal? You give us the capybara, and we don't tell your dad about this. Fine. She hands over the stuffed animal. And give us the safety scissors, too. They clearly are no longer safe in your hands. She hands them over. I'm glad we could figure this out. Come on, partner. 
Craig and I start making our way out of the woods. He turns and calls back to the twins. And tell your dad to stop letting you watch true crime TV shows. <laughs> With the capybara back to its rightful owner, Craig and I shamble into a nearby diner. Exhausted from our adventure, we find ourselves in the corner booth and settle in. That was a tough case, but we cracked it. We're different now. Changed. Did we get in Bro. too deep? <laughs> it's nothing a hearty brunch can't fix. My stomach grumbles. I suddenly realize how big of an appetite I worked up. Brunch! Give me brunch! Oh. I have strong philosophies oh. on brunch. You see, the first thing you do is divide the brunches between bogey brunch, the upper class mimosas and eggs benedict brunch, and grimy brunch, the gimme the coffee and bacon and cheesy hash browns brunch. There's a time and a place for both, and I think most of life is trying to figure out which one you need more. So, what kind of brunch dad are you, Diva? Oh, for sure, grimy, grimy brunch. Ugh. Make it fried and oily, and clean the floors with a hose and I'll be happy. A fine choice. A young waitress passes out menus as Greg situates River into a high chair. Is this your kid? You betcha. She's so cute. Hi, you. A blip. <laughs> Hey kid, middle school is going to be really tough, but if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. The waitress walks away after winking at Craig. Seems like you're the most eligible dad bachelor in town. I guess so. Anyway, here's the thing about brunch. You don't do business during brunch. Brunch is a time for rest, relaxation, and restoration with those that you love. And while we're having brunch at a traditionally brunch time, the most important thing to remember is that brunch isn't a time. Nice. It's a state of mind. He's very passionate about this whole brunch thing. If you can't have brunch on your own plate, you can always have brunch in your heart. I don't disagree with you, I just don't know if I can match your intensity. Oh. <laughs> I'll open your eyes, bro. Just you wait. We order our food and the waitress, after very blatantly hitting on Craig multiple times, eventually brings us our brunch feast. River munches on cereal next to us, more or less managing to get it into her mouth. I gotta say, man, it's really great having you back around to hang out with. Things have been so busy with work and fitness and the kids, I just haven't had time to really get out and know people. And get to know people. With you here, it's like we're picking up where we left off. I know the feeling, man. Moving to a new place could have been really tough for me. Especially with Amanda going off to college soon. You're making this a lot easier. Nice. Craig smiles at me. It feels really good to have another bro venture with you, dude. Just like old times. For a while, I forgot about anything that was bothering me in life, and it was just you and me and... More coffee? I... Oh, uh, no thank you. So, do you like work out? Oh, no. Uh, y yeah, mostly calisthenics, but I try to lift as part of my regimen. That's so cool. I've been looking for a workout buddy, oh. you know. Ah, I wish I could help you out, but I'm enjoying brunch with my workout bro right now. Hello! <laughs> well, if you change your mind... The waitress slides a folded note to Craig and walks away. Craig makes a face as he reluctantly puts it into his pocket. We can't take you anywhere, can we? Brep. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? The next time we hang out, we should be in the middle of the woods where people can't interrupt us. And also, and also, maybe in some different woods than the ones where little kids like vivisecting things. <laughs> nice. Craig laughs. Man, remember all our camping road trips back in the day? Joshua Tree, Yellowstone, that was the best. Oh. I'd give anything to do that all over again. Dude, we should do a camping weekend! Uh -huh. Oh, I don't know, bro. I'm an adult now. I have all these adult responsibilities. I don't think I could just drop everything and go hang out in the woods for a few days, you know? Come on, dude. If we plan things right, we can do this. Craig, don't you ever do anything for yourself? Craig stares into his coffee I... mug. Of course I do. Yeah, like what? I... Sometimes I let myself have a scoop of vanilla ice cream before bed. But only if I didn't meet my caloric intake that day. Gee, what a real rebel over there. Oh. And sometimes I let myself hit the snooze alarm. But only once. God, this guy really lives it up. You gotta relax sometime or it's gonna kill you. Please come camping with me. It'd be so much fun, oh. bro. I guess I could get Smashly to take the kids oh. for a weekend. I'll think about it. Hmm? We finish our brunches and head back oh. to the cul-de-sac. By the way, great job keeping up today. Seems like you're already making a lot of progress. <laughs> I'm probably gonna need a little bit of recovery time after this. Tell the girls bro. I said hello. I will. See ya, bro detective. All right, let's see how we did. Real dad, bro. I don't know. Oh dang. We did pretty good. Man, that was rank amazing. S. Now I don't get how Let's the dad points and the daddy points add up because. 
those two numbers are like a lot higher than the score, but you know, I'm not going to complain. We got our rank S. All right, you guys, and that is going to do it for this episode of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Now, so we went through Craig's first and second dates, and then the next episode will be the third date and the epilogue. Um, so if you guys want to see anybody else after Craig, let me know down in the comments below. But man, I am enjoying this game so much. I mean, the difference between Brian's story and Craig's story so far is like polar opposites because Craig or Brian was so competitive and Craig is so like laid back and friendly and so I just love all the different aspects of this game and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, have a wonderful day and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye!